My name is Rhapsody and welcome back to Vault of the Void. We're going to be breaking our previous starts uh, with respect to not rotating around the characters. Uh, no, sorry, not with respect to not rotating around the characters. The, the opposite of that. We are going to be avoiding that stance and not rotating around the characters because I would really, really, really like to have a run with all of the new toys that makes it to the end. And does this not look like an incredible setup for that? Oh my god, I would actually probably like specifically path into most of these. This is ridiculous. Concentrate, overcharge one, gain two energy. Probably gonna have that in the deck for a little bit at the start. Dueling Buckler, block five, affected by combo, balance, and nerd. Great. We get a combo builder as well as a giant block, as well as an energy pump in Rizu and the ability to get back important cards. And then Shield Bash there as well for extra vulnerability access. I don't know what to tell you. That's pretty much exactly what we want. I guess we just go Hidden Blade here. Pop that in the deck. Come on then. Okay, uh, we've got the Death Knight over here. Overcharge on every turn as well as max energy plus one. Uh, during the Void Fight, first two cards play trigger an additional time. Cool, just for your buffs. Uh, there's a potion there as well as start stealth with full energy. Okay. A random Void Stone, a random class uncommon. Or well, five souls. The Soul Collector is pretty late on. Okay. What's my path likely to be? I'm just going to quickly... Okay, cool, cool, cool. It is possible for me to get this treasure, this elite, this, that, that, and then go down to this treasure, right? So I can get both of the treasures. I can get both of the elites. Unfortunately, one of the elites and one of the treasures, two really good locations for getting souls, are both after the uh, the the merchant there. So I'm probably going to take the five souls here. That's probably a good idea. Sidestep is a really good source of some early block here, but there's also Juggle. Gain one Volatile Blade, draw three, discard three. Love it. Gusher. Gain an amount of Volatile Blades equal to your current energy. Gain one energy before doing that as well. There's also Sleight of Hand up here, and then Scattershot. Oh my gosh. Wow. What a good early path. And then there's a... There's another Bite up top there. Uh, Okay, if I want to get... I can't take building steam. That's fine. I don't really need that. We'll cut back down this way. And then we miss light it up. We miss thieves code. We miss thousand cuts. But we get now we wait and crimson slaughter and quickness. That's totally fine. All right. Put red on the important obstacles in the path, I guess. Things are going to really, really be kind of decision points for us. Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm jazzed about this. Let's uh, change our start deck a little bit here. Get a slash out of there for a hidden blade. Get a parry out for a dueling buckler. Another parry out for a bide. Another parry out for a shield bash. Uh, Redo probably wants to go in there as well, and then cut a slash for concentrate. Okay, and I don't think the red void stone needs to go in anything yet. We're probably going to look to put in that. Uh, put that rather into something that is balanced but does not have inert if possible. Um, for instance, well, I don't know, Stiletto, the new rare. Hopefully we find that. All right, let's go juggling first though. Dark Acolyte, Void Enchantress, Throat Cutter. This is literally always the first fight. I don't need to be reading that every time I see it. It's, it's the same one every time. Okay, uh, what is the play here? I kill the main two targets on the board, and then I leave the Void Enchantress here for as long as possible. Okay. Let's drop that out. Uh, I can use Redo to try and get another... No, I don't need another combo on that. That's fine. Cool. Bring back Slash, I guess. Double Purge. Should have just double purged the first time. Now we get no more response. We also do have a uh, a void stone coming up, specifically a black void stone. So excited to see that. I'll be looking for pretty much anything that has the word draw on it as a result of that, as you might imagine. Uh, this is back in two turns time. So I'll buy this turn and then we'll kill next. Okay. 
So an upgrade point. Our first upgrade point. Hidden Blade, with the fact that we already have a Bite in the deck, that Hidden Blade is a significant amount of damage. Right? Like, it's often... Uh, th this upgrade often represents in terms of vulnerability in the combo that I will already have. So assume vulnerability on the enemies, assume I have three combo. Uh, this represents another 20 damage in this upgrade. Dueling Buckler. I mean, I don't think we're going to be outpaced for block for a really long time with the cards we already have in the deck. Um, I think what we are currently outpaced for is energy. So upgrading those quicknesses in is an idea but i will say there are as we saw in the last attempt at a run like this uh, there are many other ways now to generate combo and we already have a bite in the deck and our spell generates one combo so we're in the position where maybe these quicknesses end up getting cut from the deck so it's really hard to decide at this point to invest in them okay so what this is almost certainly dogs uh, and then it can pretty much be any fights from there on out. We're getting a second bide. It can't be an upgrade on a quickness. It, it, it's, I, I don't abide it. I'm getting the dueling buckler upgrade early here. Secret room? Secret room? Nope, but we do get two secret rooms. Secret rooms. Two, uh, spare, sorry, spare. Empty tiles. There we go. Two empty tiles for the sake of the sneak artist. Loom room lightweight. Nice. Uh, we are going to have to find one way to help translate our Hidden Blade damage into long-term damage. Now, Puncture is a good way of doing that. We saw that in the last run, uh, which gives you Volatile Blades, uh, Volatile Hidden Blades, that is, uh, as well as saying any enemy that takes damage this turn is inflicted by a bleed. So that's a really, really good way to get some ramp out of all of this. Um... It's, it's a bit early at the moment for me to be thinking about ramp, especially considering it's not like we're ignoring ramp on any of the paths we're not taking here. Like, main gauche, it's really good. I'd love to have it, but it's on the opposite side to all the other stuff that I want right now. Uh, there was one, I think, here that I passed up. It wasn't scaling. Was it Swift Hands? Where's Swift Hands? No, Building Steam. When you play a Swift Card deal, two damage to a random enemy. Huh, wait. The upgrade isn't showing any difference here. I'm pretty sure it goes to three damage to a random enemy. But that is just a, a, a linear increase, right? It's about as effective as just adding more volatile hidden blades. Or more access to them, rather. Okay. Uh, da -da -da. We should totally kill the Blight with this turn. No questions about that one. Okay. Great. This is incredible. I will say, I feel very powerful early on when I play this character. Um, that's those two. But that may play a little into my playstyle of waiting for a single turn where I can do a bunch of things. Which I think that is definitely going to develop over the time that I play this game. I think one of the main areas that I have to improve in is my fight ordering. I think a lot of the times when I lose, it's because I chose to fight in well, not not chose to fight incorrectly, but I approached the fight incorrectly. All right, merchant. Swift hand would be nice. Reload would be nice. Can't take either of them though. Bleed it out, repost taste of blood. Honestly, nothing from this shop, unfortunately for me. That said, it was a very early merchant. I did put it in the path just because of it, because it fit on the path rather than looking to get value from it. So it's not like I'm sad about it. Treasure Goblin, why couldn't have you been previous? Uh, I wonder if I actually do really need to like tend too aggressive here. Like, I think it's already going to happen. Um, this Gusher is a really good target for a Black Void Stone. Play that on 5 energy, get 10 Volatile Hidden Blades on that turn. Yeah, that's, that's extremely good. Don't pass that up. We need the upgrade on it soon, though. Um, 
Mm. We'll purge everything that's just not immediate damage. Slash, get the quickness out. Dup, dup, dup. Uh, do I? Okay, so I totally can just kill right now. Nice. Got him! Got a lot more essence out of that fight than it looks like because it's not accounted for on this screen. Bide. I am so, so pleased. So ridiculously pleased to have two bides in this deck. That's what the last deck was missing, right? It was missing large block. It wasn't really missing combo generation. It had a lot of that, but it was missing specifically large block. Uh, cool. We'll drop slash and slash because we're definitely not using them as an opener anymore. Purge those two. Play a gusher. Purge this. Play the other gusher. For every four cards you play in a turn, this creature will gain one AP. <laughs> I forgot. I forgot. <laughs> Please forgive me. One, two, three. Okay, at least we're starting to get some damage out there. I was worried we never would. Uh, come on, bide. Thank you. Um, I'm going to buy shield bash, purge these two. I like that underhanded tactics going out next turn. For as much weak as it can apply. Oh, come on. You're not even attacking. Well. Damn. I think I have to hold on to this. Ugh, why did I have to play the double gusher turn? Okay, that, that dueling buckler needs to stay in hand 100% right now. Okay. Well. At least we didn't get no block. I tented the deck aggressive for the treasure goblin and I didn't change it back. So this is entirely my bad. Um, the vulnerability disappears next turn. I need to put some damage in. Yeah, because ideally I'm killing in the next two turns. So one, vulnerability, sustain. Then we kill next turn with pretty much any draw. Okay, we we got lucky to only get away with only 13 damage there. It not only could have been, but it should have been more. Uh, get the Gusher upgrade, because we're playing two times in single cycle. My Shrine, what you got for us? I'm going to take those seals. Um, We're starting to get to the point that the Soul Collector is starting to feel reasonable. Starting to feel like it probably holds significant value for us. Corrupted Ogre. Okay. We're cutting slashes now at this point. Definitely for like a buy at 100%. Uh, I'll even cut one for a parry. Purple Voidstone would be really nice to go into something that I want to multiplay, but it doesn't have to. It can just go into something that I always end up playing. Something expensive that I'm going to want to put uh, that I'm going to want to have access to more energy the turn after I've played it because I've expended all my energy. Yeah, no, it just goes into Bide. I have heard you all, by the way, on the last episode. I do think I'm being too precious with my Void Stones. I totally agree. You're right. Um, I mean, like, what, what, what good are they doing on a corpse? You know? <laughs> uh, so I, 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 I'm definitely trying to take that a little bit in stride. I think I may, like, I don't really have many targets for a green void stone. I think juggle could be it. Just extends the size of my opening hand. Gives me the ability to deal with more stuff. I'm just having difficulty finding where this red void stone goes. That's it. I think right now it could go in shield bash. I think right now it either goes in shield bash or it doesn't go in anywhere. Um, I really do want to say both of the bides here is the thing. In fact, I think I do as well. 
So let's slash. Do as much damage as is humanly possible. Do I play this or do I purge this? Okay. Bides goes covered for a turn. I'm actually going to throw that slash as well. Especially with another bite in hand. Okay. Don't like this hand at all. Play quickness. Actually going to hold. Because this is... Yeah, these are the three best defensive tools I have in the deck. So if the enemy attacks for two turns in a row, I'm going to need access to pretty much all of them. Go dueling buckler. Shield bash slash parry. Okay. Bide and the power both work here. Enemy's still vulnerable. I'm still taking damage though. Ah, uh, we have lethal. One, two, three, kill. Whew! Nice! Good fight. It's a hidden blade up against a sustenance and a backpedal. Is there any reason I would take either of the ones that are not named hidden blade right now? Maybe if I intended on putting some weakness cards in the deck, that backpedal becomes really valuable. Gives you the ability to get past them. Pretty quick. And energy neutrally as well, right? You play it for the first time and then you purge the rebound. I don't see it. I'm taking the Hidden Blade. I'm glad I took the time to consider it, but I its just really don't see it. Uh, is Juggles upgrade that important to me? Redo's upgrade is pretty big. Hidden Blades upgrade is pretty big. Actually, I'm going to get both the Hidden Blades upgraded. We have we have combo maxed out so much of the time right now. Uh, let's cut a slash for another Hidden Blade. Not tending defensive there. Lab Master for... Hmm. So I find it... Hmm. Should I buy a thing that I think I'm going to have less access to? Because that Crippling Potion looks good in that case, right? I, I have no access currently to slow... I have a little bit of weak, I have a little bit of honorable, but slow is the one that's really, really important when you get that. You know, you're going up against... Who starts with a stupid amount of frenzy? Okay, not a stupid amount of frenzy, uh, but a dependent amount of frenzy. But if you play this in the taxidermist fight, right? You can get huge value out of it. This is really good. I... I, I, I I don't want to, at this point, try and just enumerate examples because I feel like I'm unfamiliar enough with the examples I would want to give. Like, I know they're there. It's just I don't know the names and and permanences of them. It's a weird thing to discuss. So I've said that, like, very quickly, games like this are passed into just the pure mechanics of them for me, and then I'm just playing with that, right? Um, I feel like that happened really quick, uh, to the point that I, I didn't, I didn't really learn what the fights are, so now I'm kind of learning what the fights are, after the fact, in a weird way. I don't know if I explained that well at all. Corpse Beast, yeah, this will be fine. Hmm. So I've had that Dragon Egg off screen. Um, I, I do definitely want to crack it open on screen, but I don't think it's relevant for this deck. Uh, Dwarven Beard Knot increases the void, uh, the rate of void stone bar fills by 100%. <sighs> See, the thing is, that doesn't, that doesn't really translate to double the amount of void stones, because each void stone is incrementally more difficult to get than the previous void stone. Um... So if I actually knew the rate at which it increases between different urns of a void stone, 
I would be able to figure out like how many void stones I'm likely to get out of the Dwarven Beard over the course of the run. I assume it would be something around two. I actually don't think it'd be that big. This, this, this might be just like a very, very faulty assumption though. Because I'm assuming that based on the fact that I get to the end of the run and I'm almost never anywhere near getting the next void stone. It's Torch of Triumph. Like, it's it's been Torch of Triumph the whole time. We all knew it. Uh, I can only get one combo this turn, but I should really still do it. Wang. Punch that. Okay. That was some HP. And now it's not. Get me two dazes to the top of my deck for that. Uh, we already have combo active, so I'm going to juggle first. Getting rid of two dazes. Um, I really kind of want to keep the shield bash in hand for part of our defensive core next turn. And in fact, I'm going to. I was going to use the excess energy that I had down that turn to just get two turns of vulnerability up, but I like this. Use bide and shield bash on this turn. We have another Bide as well as two Quicknesses in the deck. It's totally possible I use Underhanded uh, Tactics here. That's 44 damage as well. Okay, that just doubled, right? It was... So I, I suspected this what it was what it was because I thought the first one was 200. So 200, 400, 800. Uh, and then we'll, we'll look at what our end value is and then calculate how much doubling all of the previous would have given us in extra Void Stones at the end of the run. Uh, if I forget to do that, though, uh, please remind me in the comments. I, 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 it, it, that seems like it might be an hour and a half in the future. And I have a very specifically good memory for very specific things. And then a uh, garbage memory for everything else. You need to know something that absolutely no human needs to know about the Knights Templar. I'm your man. I'm all over it. You need to know anything actionable in the real world. You need to know my, my blood type, my age. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know that, sorry. I should really know my blood type. I know that. I know. I know. I know that I should know it. And yet... It is not an uncommon occurrence that I have to turn to my partner and say, How old am I? And not exactly in a Blink-182, what's my age again kind of style. More in a, I have to fill it out on a form and I've just plum forgotten. Um, I don't even know what size shoe I am. I don't really go clothes shopping much and I mostly clothes shop at uh, op shops and, uh, and secondhand retailers and stuff like that. Okay, yeah, let's do the juggle plan. I really, I really still enjoy that. So typically my size is, yeah, whatever happened to fit. Their infection cards will feed their strength. Perfect. Okay, so we can keep that bide for a really good turn next turn. I like that idea. Keep the shield bash as well. So we use, uh, we can hold the dueling buckler too. Wow, I think I actually may end up holding a lot of this. Probably not the entire hand. Actually, what if I purge the shield buckler? Shield bash, rather. That'd be very aggressive. Can I be very aggressive in this play? Yeah, I can. One, two. Um, we'll open up on you. We'll hold the dueling buckler for a full block on one turn. We'll use the second bind for the full block on another turn. 
Um, and then by then, ideally, we will have generated enough, uh, enough value to win. Julian Buckler, redo. Thank you. The reason I played them in that order was specifically for the possibility of what just occurred. I could use both underhanded tactics as well as slash to get a kill here, but then I only have bide and quickness. I would have to draw both of these in order to actually get enough combo. Um, but I guess I could also just hold slash. Well, or slash. Yeah, okay. There, there's a few ways. There's a few roads to roam here. Um, but I still do want to kill all... Do I want to kill all three of them one turn? Is that even likely? Incoming damage is 14. The Gusher is actually quite likely to kill many of them in a single turn. Okay, so... Damage, weaken... I could have weakened you more times. So, eh, whatever. Uh, purge that parry, hold the dueling buckler? Am I really holding the dueling buckler? Yeah, in the circumstance where I don't draw bite, it's necessary. And we're almost certainly getting a slash, so it's okay. Mm-hmm. Okay, we might actually even be able to kill this turn. We have no access to vulnerability in this hand, which is a little bad, though. Slash, quickness, power. Yeah, I'm not even going to attempt to kill this turn, actually. One, two, purge. Your Festa gets you... Okay, so you still will need to be a target of the card, but the Torch of Triumph is going to be really good here. Uh, yeah, it's going to be... Gerger, Gerger. And then... A good old get him. You love to see a good old get him. We're taking 23 into the Soul Collector. Okay, come on. Give me relics. Sorry, artifacts that are related to the Hidden Blade build. Do it, 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 do it. Oh, that's a hell of an artifact, though. Penitent Seal is out of a turn. Uh, of course, I'm kidding. It's Flask of <laughs> Purple Juice. Gain one upgrade point after each perfect victory. We're about to upgrade our whole deck. Uh, Void Doll also here. I'm just going to click that and then just walk away. <laughs> I think, uh, think this is the right play for me. Ooh, Skeleton Mage. You've got a 6-4 now? I thought you were a 4-4. Did you get buffed again? Oh, if you got buffed again, I actually may need to use the Crippling Potion in this fight. Yeah, because if a 6-4 hits me, that's 24 incurred, right? My 16s don't block that. I think I caught a slash for a parry going into this fight. I'm not going to use the crippling potion because I think I might need it for an elite next floor. Th Wait, is this an elite this floor? Yeah, this is the final elite this floor. Okay, we're using the crippling potion. Uh, hemolytic vial every three battle rounds. Trigger the bleed of all. No. Fractal Feather! Every time you play a card with the same name as a card, already played this turn, block three. That counts for Hidden Blades. That is, uh, it, it doesn't say on it the words Hidden Blades, uh, but this is very much a Hidden Blades card. Uh, that slash no longer really means anything here. There wasn't coming damage on both of the first two turns. I feel pretty good about all this then. Um, we'll want to save energy. Yeah, we've got two bides left in the deck. Let's parry, parry, concentrate. <sighs> Single parry underhanded tactics? Yeah, I don't want to use my ability this turn because everything's going to cost one more. Parry. Underhanded. Double purge. So we're almost certainly using a single bide next turn because it's 16. Right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, so we'll... I mean, I can do that afterwards, right? Three goes down to four. Goes up. Wait. Yeah, we have to do that after. So it's Gusher. Gusher. Bide. Quickness. 
get hidden about it. And we got a perfect victory, so we get the upgrade point. Uh, so now that we actually have specifically the uh, Flask of Purple Juice, we're going to want to uh, tend towards, like, if, if it's otherwise 50-50, I'll tend towards upgrading a defensive card to try and utilize the, the Flask of Purple Juice better. Uh, we saw in this fight, without access to slow or weaken, we would have had a lot of difficulty blocking those larger hits because the bides were 16. Let's give them six each extra. So they're going to be our next two upgrades. Last trainer down here. So if I gave you this, you would transform it. Uncommon chance is 10%. If I gave you this, there's a rare chance of 5%. Uncommon chance of 30%. Transform the card. I've never really used this space much at all, but you know what? I have a now we wait and I have some excess money, so let's do it. Oh. Uh, that focus sure says extra energy for a deck that is a little bit desperate for energy. Go for more greed. All right, and this one is very much just going to be make sure I have the defense in hand if I'm going to go off. Make sure I can back it up if I'm going to snap, you know? Um, hmm. One, two... Uh, yeah, I can just play out the rest of this turn. One, two, oh. Hold a dueling buckler. I'm going to want to play this after the loaded picklet explodes. The first of them explodes, rather. Cool. So 14 incoming damage now. 22 incoming damage now. Dueling Buckler plus the parry completely blocks. And then we actually kill. Two random Void Stones. I mean, there's also receive a booster back, which is very interesting here, right? Like, there are a lot more tools now for hidden, uh, hidden blades. I think it's the random Void Stones, though. Then try not to be too precious with those either. Let's do that. Second Hidden Blade wants an upgrade right now. Pretty badly. Oh god, I should have... Should have considered the upgrade on the Smoke Bomb. Okay, with the second, you'll also go into a bind. Thank you. Red Void Stone. Um, I could just pop it into a Hidden Blade. Twenty-five percent rage on a single hidden blade, but like any of these in a hidden blade is pretty not great, right? Literally just because it has the inert keyword on it there. Um, so maybe I don't. How long are we really gonna leave the least, uh, the rest of those slashes in the deck? I feel like not long. I feel like as soon as we get one more combo activatable card, we happily cut everything along those lines. There are a lot of cuts we get to make as soon as that happens, right? Slash, 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 underhanded tactics, as well as two quick... Do I really want to make all those cuts? Because what if both bides are at the bottom of the deck? Do I want to only have one combo from my spell? I don't think so. I don't think so. Okay, I'm going to pop one of these in quickness and pop the other one also in quickness. That's where they'll sit for the moment. Anemia, bleed... Oh, okay, yeah, Disheveled Salesman. We have a ridiculous amount of essence. We're definitely going to that path. So, oh my god. Oh, wow. Our path is pretty decided for us already. I'm just going to I'm just gonna point out the max value path. Bop, 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 bop. Bop, 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 bop. Right? That is the obvious max value path. We hit uh, the shrine. 
We hit the disheveled salesman. We hit the only merchant as well as the only treasure. We hit the dark mime early on. That could be extra defense for us. We hit both of the elites and we get the soul collector late in the run. We also get three early upgrades. We miss out on a bleed out. Don't care about that. We miss out on a cursed item. Care a little. Hurts a bit. Uh, we get anemia, unrelenting, kneecaps. Okay, that's some access to weaken. Very, very happy to have that. Probably going to take it and immediately upgrade it. Uh, reinforcements, volatile smashes. Probably not super interested in that. Aggressive attack, neither. Mithril blades, yes. Uh, we get that near the very end. Thinning out, Nick. There's another mithril blades here that we miss out on. And a full the throat that we miss out on. Yeah, this is definitely the max value path for us. Nothing else is in contention. Uh, okay, is there any reason I would want to adjust my deck before this fight? None that I can think of. Let's go into it. Okay. I can get up to five energy right now. I can do that at any point. Let's juggle. Okay, there's a slash that's too late to be effective. I'm going to use that quickness and then hope that I get it back from the redo for extra draw. Ha! <laughs> nice. Nice. Uh, is that nice? This one's volatile. Yeah, I would want to play the Bide, right? Not just have it in hand. Okay, that's actually not nice, as it turns out. I thought it over, and... Uh... No, I don't believe it is nice. This turn, though. This turn is nice as hell. This Fractal Feather is going to go the heck off. I'm going to quickly uh, pop a Shield Bash in the Tax Demist. Uh, you know what? I'm going to bite as well this turn. And then I'm going to kill everyone. Well, that was really, really bad. Everyone. There we go. Um, Juggle does want an upgrade. Both the quicknesses kind of want an upgrade at the moment as well. Uh, energy is still a problem. Yeah, I'm getting... Uh, Smoke Bomb does want an upgrade, but doesn't need to go into the deck just yet. Focus wants an upgrade and to go into the deck. Does it want an upgrade? Yeah, it kind of does. Sure. All right, Focus. We'll cut a slash for the Focus, because I think we have abundant access to damage right now. Sure as hell says Dueling Buckler, don't it? It's <laughs> 100% what's printed on that. Um, let's just... And then... That and then that. Yes! Goat Vulture Game. I still need to learn so much about this fight. I feel like this is the kind of fight that I'm still going to be optimizing a thousand hours in. And I also strongly suspect I will end up at a thousand hours in. All right, let's start out with a Yugle. Mm. That changes things, don't it? Don't need to parry on the first turn. I love the idea of that bide right now, though. Seven vulnerability on another target. I mean, I can just drop the slash, right? I was always going to drop the slash. Uh... I get one less Volatile Blade, but I get to play everything out if I play the Gusher first. I don't get to play everything out, right? I get to play most things out. Most things is fine. One. Qua? Oh, right, yeah. You pay an energy and you gain an energy. Oops. I thought I was gaining energy off the back of this somehow. 
Yeah, I should have done that perch first then. Whoopsie. A uh, doopsie. Oh, uh, that's my bad. Let's also just get some more hidden blades out here. And then just... Just murder everyone. Just everyone. Murder, I mean. The people? All of them. Pyamite and the Pyre. Yeah, I, uh, I feel pretty confident here. I wonder why. Okay. I'm going to purge this, then Gusha and Gusha. I'll use Juggle now. Okay, well, if I found any way to actually get combo, I would have utilized it. Uh, I mean, I just killed a pyre, right? We get the pyre down. Prevents most of the sources of burning. So these pyre mites both ought to be very, very vulnerable for the rest of the fight. Hidden blade. Um, I mean, I'd like vulnerability on a target. Uh, if only that returned damage. That said, I actually don't want to kill this turn, right? And one more turn, get the Ghost Blade up, play as many cards as we can towards the Torch Triumph. One, two, three, four, purge. All right, I want to kill with the ninth card. Yeah, one. Uh, anything that attacks the enemy, I guess I drop here. Two, and then kill. And it's because the last one isn't recorded if it's a kill. We need the kneecaps upgraded. Don't really get a choice in that. Smoke Bomb really ought to be upgraded as well. I don't know if that's necessarily going to the deck just yet. Uh, I think we cut Slash and probably Underhanded Tactics. Okay, yeah, it it'll go into the deck as well as the kneecaps now. Dark Mime. So after I go in here, I can't adjust my cards yet. So let's think about it before we enter. Well, I can't really adjust my cards at all anyway right now. So I just hope I already set something up that I'm comfortable. I mean, look. <laughs> look. It's Gusha. It just is. Is there anything else that is instead? It's not. It's just Gusha. Nine souls. Hmm. I may end up missing out on something important in that soul collector, but I'm taking the risk. I think the second Gusha is worth maybe more than a random rare artifact. I can be proven wrong here. I actually kind of expect to be. Okay. Uh. I mean, I like the, the weak on all enemies right now. Very, very keen to get into that. Uh, hold a dueling buckler. My gosh. Okay. Definitely get rid of the energy. I think I get rid of shield bash here too now. And the final card. I could get rid of uh, the hidden blade. It's actually not too bad to get rid of. It's the volatile one as well. Yeah, because I need to hold the defense for the other two turns. Okay. How much defense do I get to hold if I'm using kneecaps? None. Dang. Okay, I think I have to purge a dueling buckler as well. Or the hidden blade. I can just purge a single hidden blade, right? Yeah, let's purge the hidden blade and use this as a setup turn. Purge. Bide. Kneecaps. Um... Did, wait. Did, did kneecaps always say? I'm, I'm sorry. Did, did kneecaps always say just one enemy? For some reason, I thought I was going to be weakening all enemies. I was actually certain of it. 
Cool. Okay. Uh, well, this is going to change some stuff. I mean, I'd like to snap one of the... I didn't put the second gusher in the deck. Oh my god. What is wrong with me? I'll pop that before redoing, just in case I get the most important card. Uh, okay, gusher is in the next hand. Possibly. Let's hope, actually. Perfectly awful hand we just drew. Okay. If I attack the Drown two times here, it'll die. It's also the only incoming damage next turn. That's actually pretty justifiable. Means that I don't have to block in this turn at all. Oh, wow. Wait, you can't actually deactivate the Gosha, right? Because I'm gonna... I'm gonna... I mean, I, I guess juggle first, right? Because it doesn't matter to deactivate juggle's ability. Right? And then quickness. Yeah, because I'm not playing by this turn. So we'll play quickness. Then gurger. Another gurger. I really want to have to combo out this turn if I don't have to. And 12 over here. Uh, when this creature is destroyed, it will inflict 20 damage. We have the bide to counter that. Perfect. And then there's no refreshes after this point. I'm actually just going to purge the focus. We're fine. Um, there's no refreshes to the board after this point. So as long as I kill this bloated, I'm already fine that turn. Uh, let's set up... Set up vulnerability and weakness on you. Just make you a little bit more of a pitiable thing. Oh, and then I'm just gonna kill you because I have damage apparently in hand that I didn't think about. 15. Yeah, I think Shield Bash is still a pretty integral part of this deck. Greed. Uh, during your turn, each time you draw a card, block one. Nah. At the start of each fight, one temporary celerity will be added to your deck. Gain combo equal to your max. So this is just fill your combo. Eh? Leather gloves, each time you purge an ability card, deal two damage to the enemy with the lowest. Each time you purge an attack card, block one. Eh? I mean, there is a merchant in the next space. I may actually turn down all of these. How much draw do we actually actively do, right? We do three on turn one. And then one with the, the quicknesses thereafter. If this also blocks you for the draw that you naturally do, and is five block a turn there naturally, yeah, I'm really interested. I should probably take it just on the possibility of that. Thieves' Tools, honestly, our deck is Thieves' Tools. We don't need this to already have access to this. Uh, it's also worth noting, it's just another card in the deck. Maybe I don't necessarily want Thin Deck Rhapsody. Uh, and then leather gloves, we don't purge, like, much. Thank heck I left myself with extra money. Over here we have a Blades Upon Blades, attack, swift, deal 11 damage, gain 1 volatile hidden blade. going to be taking that, and then we are going to be thanking our lucky stars. I'm actually also going to take this bite as well. Totally happy. Uh, let's, uh, let's, 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 let's modify the deck a little bit, right? And actually put the Blades of our Blades in here. That redo is actually kind of underperforming, but as soon as I upgrade, it's going to be fine. We have easy access to upgrades, so it's not bad. Uh, get a bind in there as well. I'm feeling real weird about our energy positioning, but still not keen on using that, uh, concentrate here. I, I harp on that too much. Um, let's go. I think we're set. I hag. 
Block three for each combo consumed. We don't actually really consume our combo consistently. Um, also, on the turns that we consume our combo consistently, we are going to generate a lot of volatile hidden blades. And as it turns out, that'll help. Laurel debuffs suffered by one for each leftover energy at the end of the turn. Seems like a play here, right? Uh, the Keg of Lucky Rump doesn't really have that much of an opportunity to give us more. And the Holy Apogee could be relevant. It doesn't have to be relevant to still be the best option there. Um, probably not going to be attacking for a little bit, actually. So the, the focus can easily disappear there. Let's go Shield Bash, Kneecaps, Quickness. Do I want to start attacking this turn? No. No, I only have one combo. I mean, one combo in 50% rage. There's some reason to possibly consider it. I'm not going to. Uh, get the smoke bomb out. Hold the bite in hands. Stop baning me. Okay, this is definitely the turn we attack on then. Purge a single bide as well as that. Okay. Before it resolves, you'll suffer six threat. So uh, we actually only suffer three threat every single time we do that. I have to play the bide first if I actually want as much combo power out of this as I can get. So that means dueling buckler plays at the end of the turn, which means I don't play gusher for full energy. Okay. We... Double gush. Ghost blade. Bide up. Actually, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna kill the enemy there. <laughs> Save myself any extra considerations there. Take the bite upgrade. Soul Collector twenty one. Oh, we do have enough for the possibility of getting a hand mirror each time you play a block card. Delay block four. We don't really play block cards though. Spellstone reduce the cooldown on spells by one. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, and bloody bait. If you apply slow X to an enemy, which we don't apply weak and vulnerable to the same enemy, which we also don't. I'm gonna take a random uh, artifact. Square peg, if you gain a mount of block exactly equal to the remaining threat, delay block seven. Eh, fine. Uh, draw potion pack, increase your hand size by one. I mean, look, in the final fight, that's just extra energy, extra aggression. It's, it's, it's extra everything. I'm just going to take it. Beast of Malice. I have to go on the offensive eventually. I already intend to. Do not worry. Carrying case, if you kept a non-weakness card in your hand at the end of the turn, you'll draw one more card at the start of the next turn. Okay, so that's effectively, like, retained outside of your own hand. That is very good. Battle plan is also not bad. Most of the cards that we play in this deck are going to be ability cards. Um, let's actually have a look at the active deck. Uh, ability, 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 ability. Like, the, the, the vast majority of this deck is ability cards. Um, Barbed Wand, each time you cast your spell, apply a Vulnerable 2 to a random enemy. I think if I didn't already have the Shield Bash in the deck, maybe I'd be looking for that. Um, maybe I should still look for it. No. No, 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 we're fine. Battle Plan, for every 6 ability cards played, Carrying Case, Battle Plan, Carrying Case. I mean, this is, this is almost always draw for us, because we're holding Bides, we're holding dual, uh, Dueling Bucklers, we're holding the Focus or the Kneecaps or the Gushers for the right turn, right? So if something said one extra draw every turn, would I take it? Yes. But part of that value is based on the fact that it draws me an extra card in the opening turn, which this doesn't. And I have no real access to vulnerability right uh, Sorry, not vulnerability. Rage right now. Second battle plan. I feel like the argument is easily, easily, easily decided by the fact that I just don't have much other access to rage. Oh uh, my god. This is... This is a bad turn because it's so good. If that makes any kind of no sense at all. Drop the shield bash there. The smoke bomb. Weakness. I have no clue where I'm finding the energy to play all of this. I don't know where I think I'm getting it all from. Uh, 
which is 25. So that, that, that would be 25. That would increase your frenzy by one. So I don't want to hit you with the extra hidden blade there. 14. Okay. This is a good turn to go on the offensive, though. And then the battle plan goes off this turn, too. In fact, I would not be surprised at all to kill the enemy now. Uh, unfortunately, as I hover over them, the... Uh, the tooltips are showing up exactly on the character, so I can't see the health bar while I'm targeting this. But I was pretty confident we were getting the kill there. Okay. That blue void stone... There are so many things that make sense in this Blade Upon Blades. Rage actually would make so much sense. Like, just a single rage stone. If... I'm just saying, if I'd held a red void stone earlier... And not being so hasty about it, it'd be good in this position. But also, we benefited a lot from having actually socketed it at this point. So I'm not, I'm not actually legitimately trying to make the argument that it was correct to hold them previously. I'm just saying that this is exactly the reason that I try and hold them. But that doesn't necessarily make it right. I agree. I agree on that front. We're in total agreement. It's a dream and it's a bit of a dance. It's a bit of a posture. It's a bit of a stance. Uh, I like the dueling bucklers, but I have a lot of defense left in the deck at this point. I can probably drop one or two. Okay, I don't want to drop them now. Because <laughs> I just got bide. Uh, let's drop these. I'm actually also going to drop the hidden blade this turn. Use a single bide. Use a... Do I actually want to go aggressive this turn? I could go aggressive. How aggressive if I go aggressive? I'd have to kill the Lost Spirit and then the King, which means I'd start on the King. So what, I get two attacks out there? Is that worth anything? Not really. I'm do it next turn. Hidden Blade out. Also just going to use the Quickness for Rage. Pop a Smoke Bomb out there too for good value's sake. 23 incoming. The Dueling Buckler is already going to block us for 20 of that. There's the Blades upon Blades. We also have a Bide in hand. I'm going to drop the Shield Bash happily. I think I actually just defend this turn throughout damage. What I use Gusher. I use Gusher again. I end up with four energy. It's the Blaze Upon Blades that concerns me. It's 44 damage at the end of the turn and introduces another set of damage to my hand, but unless I have combo, I can't really gener uh, like benefit from the extra stuff. So the Bite is here for the possibility of getting us back up to combo afterwards, but it's not really going to be able to be used in that way. I'm actually going to purge the Bite and just go Gusher, Gusher. Yeah, we got the extra rage from that. So it's 20 over here. So one, two, one, two, three, four. Yeah. Yeah, we were always fine right there. Okay. That concentrate's looking a little better now because the more overcharge I have, the more value I can get out of the gusher. Enemies with bleed suffer vulnerable too. Yep. We'll do that upgrade and then add it back into the deck with blue void stone on it. Uh, no, because I may end up putting the blue void stone in the blade upon blades, right? That'd be a really good way to then reach for more combo gain afterwards, right? I think that's actually really good. Mithril blades. Totally fine with this. Oh, good lord. That's one hell of an opening hand. 
yeah, 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 yeah. We just do, we just do this. No ifs, ands, or buts about this one. Quickness first. That is definitely extra energy. Am I fine getting rid of a weak a kneecaps here? I think I have to be. Dropping kneecaps, using focus, using juggle. Uh, drop. Shield bash, dueling buckler, and hidden blade. Then I quickness. And then I use two of these hidden blades. Gaining two extra energy. And then I gusha gusha. So the AoE damage from the Torch of Triumph also got amplified by the, the vulnerability. So all, like, all damage sources are amplified in that way. Nice. Good to know, good to know. Ooh, Blades of the Blades is back. <laughs> you know what else is back? Geezer. Let's redo. Eh, not really the cards I wanted, but Goozer. Maybe a little bit more of a Goozer. Uh, sure. Let's get Bite out there as well. We're definitely killing this turn. And then that kills at the end, so I keep my Torch of Triumph. Uh, I mean, look. Mithril Blades really wants an upgrade here. And Mithril Blades really shall get an upgrade here. Uh, cut a single parry from the deck, pop the... Actually, I'm going to cut the other parry from the deck as well, get Concentrate and Mithril Blades in here. I haven't played the parries in a really long time, and I feel like that's probably a, a, a point to consider, maybe. Okay. Pinky and the Birth Pit. The boss gets temporarily buffed when targeted by attacks, so knowing when to back off and focus on her gradually growing minions is key. Um... So the thing about that game is I'm not going to. <laughs> the thing about that, though, is that I'm just going to attack. Uh, let's go quickness. Quickness. Oh, my God. I'm going to drop the bide. Play the mineral blades and then redo. Okay, we got another quickness. We got the bide back. Great. Two very... Oh, my God. Two very good hits right there. I'm going to slow play this for a second. I can do this. We purge Smoke Bomb, Hidden Blade, and Shield Bash. We open up with Blades upon Blades. Then we use a Ghost Blade and Bide. And hope to hell that we can kill next turn. Each attack card played against this creature is increasing his frenzy by one, resets the frenzy one after attacking. Mm. Mm. Uh-oh. What did I just do? Um. Well. Honestly, probably just won the fight. <laughs> yeah, we're totally fine. 48. Uh, okay, I'm gonna go for a couple of these as well. There we go. Never mind, we're all good. Just just a bit thick, but we're all good. Uh, let's go for the random void stones there, definitely. Card upgrades. What should it be upgrades? Um, I really don't think any of these are going to be viable, so aggressive attack, I guess. The theoretical possibility that I consider it. Uh, we got a green void stone. We did get a purple void stone, which is not a bad blades upon blades hit there. The thing is, blades upon blades is often only going to be played as the finisher, though, so maybe I should reconsider whether or not it's a good target. Uh, I will say, mithril blades and smoke bomb both want to be in the opening hand deeply and desperately. Mithril blades probably more so, though, so we'll give you the green void stone 
because this can provide instantaneous value, then I do think the blue void stone is going to go into blades on blades. But I might earn the next void stone over the course of the next two fights. So we'll leave that for just a second. And then finally, another purple void stone in another bide. With stealth and full energy would be really good for helping us make sure we are charged up for the gushes, as well as for making sure that we have uh, the ability to play out our buffs without any real interference. Uh, the first two cards played trigger an additional time. This one we are always going to be going for because the Mistral Blades double plays at the start of the fight. It's obvious value, right? Uh, oh my god, the, our second turn is going to be really good here. Okay, we're just going to Mithril Purge Juggernaut make you weak. It's uh, actually, okay, yeah, maybe our third turn that's really good here. Um, yeah, I can still do this, I think. Because we've got enough Fractal Feather triggers this turn to definitely be okay. Okay, concentrate. We get the extra energy and overcharge as well. Purge that bide, then Gasha. 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 Excuse me. Gasha. Smoke bomb. All right, let's see if this is enough. Get him! Get him! We're going in. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was enough. Uh, start the next run with a random potion seems like a totally viable choice here, but I do just want to see how nutty this can get. Overcharge one and increase your max energy by one. It, 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 it means something in this deck. It really, really does. I think I can defend myself well enough that this is the one that I go for. It's also worth noting, Death Knight, we have a couple block cards in our deck, definitely, but uh, we rely on them a lot less than most, most decks might. Hmm. Drop a bide. Drop a hidden blade as well, I guess. Okay, good. We got another quickness back. Very happy about that because it means I don't have to use the bite. I'm just going to throw those out as well. Yeah, I don't want to use the bite. I just want to get my damage from every other resource. Speaking of using every other resource instead... It's time to use every other... Hang on. One sec. Just give me... There we go. It's time to use every other resource. Get him! And delete it. Yeah. <laughs> I figured that was about to happen. All right. We'll release those souls. We did find that we were incapable of getting the yellow void stone here, which means this will go into the blade on blades. Void fight. Manage the deck and draw, draw. Energy, energy. Draw, health, strength. Feel like I probably got this one. Let's say by turn two. Let's give him a spicy long line. Ah, three. Three. Yeah, two. Two is unrealistic. Three. Uh, okay, first two cards, double blade. So, Mithril Blades get double played. I'm actually just want to deepen my draw by double playing the quickness here as well. I think I actually do want to do that. You're losing three of your negative condition per turn, so I could we uh, kneecaps you. I totally could. It it would be viable. I'm not going to because I don't think I need to at all, almost ever. Pretty sure I have more than enough defense for anything you could do. Drop that. And that's also going to drop this hidden blade this time. Let's go... Focus into quickness, getting an extra energy, giving me the ability to play blades upon blades as many times as I would like. Mm-hmm. 
And then we'll discard a Hidden Blade. I don't think the Smoke Bomb's going to be fast enough for us. It's got a Bide, sure. Gush is pretty good. We'll keep that one. Okay, and then... Overcharge. I'll purge one of these and then get Bide on the other two. We'll start attacking and... Just looking to get to as much energy as I can next turn and then throw out this and probably... There we go, the other Gusher that I draw. Uh, enemy is vulnerable, so purge, purge, purge. Quickness, Gusher, hang on, I'm gonna... Okay, I know there's no max hand size, so... One sec, one sec. Yeah. Yeah, it seems about right. I'm just gonna... And then also, and then maybe from, okay, and, but also this one here, and then what if we use a hidden blade? I think actually a hidden blade might be the next best play after that, and then another couple hidden blades. That's what I was trying to do last run. And that's why I had to play this character again, so that I could demonstrate that for you. I'm gonna hit this nick because it says draw on it, and, uh, and and we know my feelings on that, do we not? Let's go back to the main menu so they can say that my name is Ben Rhapsody. The name of the game has been Vault of the Void. There is a playlist in the description down below with all my content on this game, past, present, and your best belief future. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves, and hopefully we'll see you next time.